Hey everyone, welcome to Star Flag Media. Today is February the 15th, 2024, as of this recording. And my gosh, we had to get on before the Drunken Idiots podcast this weekend because we had major news, uh, you know, today with what pretty much everybody has been waiting for uh, in the last, what, week and a half to two weeks. As we all know, there was uh, uh, tons of rumored leaks coming about the future of xbox and some it all started with the first party exclusive games are going to be coming to nintendo switch and to playstation 5 and then it it just ballooned out of there uh that starfield was going to be a rumored game and then from there uh, all these other you know quote unquote journalists uh started saying that not only was it Starfield, but also a big upcoming exclusive Indiana Jones, Bethesda game that was announced on the Direct last month, was also going to be coming uh, to PlayStation 5, along with some other games, first-party games. Now, at first, uh, you know, I, I it, it caught me by surprise, so of course we, we talked about it here on the channel, and, uh, you know, you, you kind of have to talk about it because, my goodness, what what kind of a, of a gaming channel would we be or a news channel or media channel, whatever you want to call us, if we didn't talk about, like, the biggest news of the week, right? Um, if you watched the Drunken Idiots podcast uh, with, with myself and Chris, Chris, you know, was celebrating and very anti-Xbox. He really dislikes Microsoft and, and Xbox. And I, and I was trying to take more of a, a middle-of-the-ground approach, of course, because a lot of times with these rumors, as we've seen over the years, they come and, and they end up being completely false or wildly blown out of proportion. So uh, some people in the industry, such as uh, Spawnwave, RGT85, and um, uh, uh, Nate the Hate, all basically got some insider info right before this dropped a couple of days ago, um, talking about, uh, that it wasn't going to be uh, as big a deal as people are making it out to be. And, of course, uh, those Xbox haters uh, went all in on it. They still refused to believe that, uh, you know, that basically they, they called the end of Xbox, that they weren't coming out with a next-gen console. And you can go back and watch uh, these episodes. Now, you know, the thing is, in Chris's situation, he he definitely watches, uh, I think, a lot of good videos, a lot of uh, of of other uh, journalists out there, gaming outlets, that are heavily PlayStation biased, and he, of course, having that inclination towards that, really gravitated towards it. Um, I tend to enjoy more Nintendo games. Uh, than I do Sony or Xbox. So I came at this as I have for the last few years as I don't see Microsoft changing course that drastically. I believe it's going to be, you know, older games. I can see Gears of War. I can see, you know, games that have been out for years that are already, you know, saturated on the Xbox uh, market and uh, later on will become available multi-platform they lose nothing and gain everything by then welcoming in new fans who then say oh the next halo is going to come out and i have to wait a year and a half for it to drop on playstation or nintendo switch 2 but it's out now on game pass and it's out now on on xbox those people are going to get those games and gravitate towards the platform because it's it's the generation that we live in now is fear of missing out you know myself and chris and and sergeant america when he's on here sometimes we're of the older gamer generation where we are okay with timed exclusives and we were patient to wait six months for that dlc or that or that game to drop on the next console but the newer generations in the last decade especially anybody that grew up uh you know as let's say a wii or an xbox 360 or ps3 as their first consoles you know 20 years ago an 18 year old 20 year old kid nowadays they don't have that patience of waiting. They don't need to wait. They can get the Xbox now and play it now, or they can just get Game Pass now. They're going to do that. They're going to do it now. So that's what Microsoft is banking on. They want to make Xbox a platform, and, you know, this is what that podcast basically was. It was exactly what, you know, what down the middle. It was a nothing burger. Uh, 
so we're going to talk about this, of course, on Drunken Idiots and get, you know, Chris's take. He's probably going to downplay it. Uh, but uh, as, you know, corporate speak and mumbo jumble and double speak because there was a Verge, uh, you know, interview that came on with Phil Spencer where he didn't completely dismiss the idea of Starfield coming out in the future on multi platforms. But again, the future, a year, two years down the line, that's completely. You know, yeah, that can absolutely happen. But by that point, Xbox has found their their audience, and they found the people who wanted it on Xbox and wanted it day one already. So they lose nothing by doing that down the road. Uh, so just to go through some really quick recaps here, right away, uh, Microsoft. Uh, you know, uh, I think her name is Samantha. You know, pardon me if I get that name wrong. She she comes in and she asks the important question just to get everybody started. And it was, is Starfield and Indiana Jones going to be multi-platform? Because Phil talked about four upcoming games that are going to be multi-platform. And Phil Spencer outright says no. The four games that we have planned to come out multi-platform are not going to be Starfield. It is not going to be Indiana Jones. There's no if ands or buts about it will it come down the line two years from now maybe but by that point again it's been played it's been reviewed and it it, and it's going to be a lot like when a switch gets you know doom a year and a half or two years later because you know now it's ported over well the people who wanted doom day one they they've got their experience already now if you're just a Nintendo gamer or just a PlayStation gamer, then you can get the port later on. And who knows? Maybe that'll turn you into a big enough Doom fan when when the next one drops, you're going to want it day one and you might just get Game Pass. Which brings me to the next thing that they talked about was Game Pass. Game Pass not going away. That's their future. That's the future of their business. Not only is it not going away, all Activision Blizzard games are now going to be day one on Game Pass. And they're starting this off with Activision Blizzard games showing up on Game Pass March 28th with Diablo 4. Which means, what does that mean? In my in my eyes, that indicates that Call of Duty will be a day one Game Pass. Uh, on day one Game Pass on day one xbox and then if you want to buy the game on ps5 and buy the game on nintendo they're still going to make gangbusters on call of duty because you're going to buy it on the platform that you have they lose nothing by that if you see that game pass might be the bigger value instead of purchasing the game well microsoft gets you on game pass and they get your subscription They said Game Pass now has 35 million subscribers. That's more subscribers to Game Pass than there are Xbox Series S and X sold. There's 25 million of those sold. So there's more Game Pass subscribers than their console base. That's a huge driver in business. Um, So they talked about hardware. They're not leaving the console space. And not only did they talk about hardware, they said that it's going to include uh, subscription cloud services digital and retail which means you're like i said their next generation they talked about that is going to include games that you can purchase and download onto the console at the very least it's going to be digital and then for this holiday they have an upcoming announcement for hardware which has to be that leaked rumored uh digital version of that series x with like two or three terabytes of you know internal memory so you can download games onto it i mean listen all the people out there that were doom and gloom and celebrating uh sony's you know uh, uh i mean yeah sony's triumph and nintendo's triumph and microsoft's demise now they have to you know uh, take a big slice of humble pie because you know they're gonna try to double down they're gonna try to downplay this they're gonna try to talk about it's not a big deal and how they they're gonna try to grasp at straws you know saying oh it's still open to the future those games can still go multi-platform which of course it can because first of all we can't see it to the future but 
by that time, it's not going to hurt the Xbox brand. It can only expand their audience. They've shown it with games like Minecraft. So what are these potential future four games that might be coming to Switch or to PlayStation 5? Well, Phil said that these were service-oriented games. They were legacy titles at, at least a year old. Um, and so that brings us to the rumored games. Two of them are pretty much confirmed at this point, which one of them is a Sea of Thieves, which was a rare game, uh, you know, a fun uh, service game on the Xbox. Uh, the other one that's rumored is Hi-Fi Rush. That's been data mined and almost confirmed. That game is probably coming to both Switch and PlayStation 5. Pentiment is the other game. And then uh, the other uh, uh, rumored game is Grounded. So... Does Microsoft, you know, lose anything by bringing these first party games over on PlayStation or Nintendo? This doesn't hurt Xbox whatsoever, not at all. So Microsoft isn't Sega. They're not, you know, they're not in a a situation where they're going to go bankrupt anytime soon. And of course, they don't want to keep dumping and pumping money out there. But with the acquisition of of Zenimax and Activision Blizzard and King and all of that, you know, Microsoft is now the biggest publisher of video games on the planet, whether you like it or not. If that means that they're going to expand their audience with third party uh, initiatives. They're going to do that, but they're, they've made it very clear in this very podcast, and you can call it corporate speak. You can call it um, you know, consumer fluff, and it might be. It might be, but we have to take it for what they said. At the end of the day, their focus is Game Pass, next generation hardware, which is supposed to be going to be a leap above what we're used to seeing now, and that they are focusing on the Xbox brand on PC and mobile devices. So they're going to trickle out these smaller games or these older games on the other consoles after they've had their breakout success on Xbox or lack thereof when they can find a bigger audience. Holy cow, guys. This was like a huge a huge day for Xbox uh, gamers. For I mean, I think if you're into video games, you were watching this podcast so uh, let me know what you guys think. Um, what do you guys think? Uh, you know, Talents is, uh, eight, you know, you know, Chris's uh, position is going to be tomorrow. We'll find out. He's probably going to come in hard. He's probably still going to try to defend his point of view. And, and that's fair if he comes in with a valid argument. Well, we're going to we're going to hear him out. Right. Um, as always, we're we're super excited for for you guys joining us here on the channel. And, um, you know, if if you were one of those people that started jumping up and down at the thought of starfield coming to playstation 5 well i'm sorry to break the news to you it looks like it's not gonna happen it was just a rumor and it was false information um as one of our uh ex-presidents said it was fake news um so what's the more what's the moral to all this guys uh you know people out here on youtube they took major l's um, happy to jump on the Xbox uh, is dead bandwagon, and uh, it wasn't even close to that. So um, let me know your thoughts on the comments below. Please make sure to like and subscribe if you're already liked and subscribed. Thank you. Uh, share the video. Uh, that helps us a lot. As always, I am Anthony. I'm here with Star Flag Media, and thanks for checking us out.